Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about pixel sorting with built-in plugins. So we're going to be taking a look at an effect that I actually just discovered the other day. It's called CC Kernel. It's from the old Psycore effects that have been bundled into After Effects for quite a while now. I had to actually look up some documentation on it, and I found an old PDF that explains how it works. So you have these selectors, and they're kind of arrayed out in a grid like that. The middle one is the actual part of the pixel that we're sampling, and then the other edge ones are kind of like sub-pixel sampling. And you have all these sliders in the effects, set up like this, that correspond to each one of these points. So each one is line one, and then you have one, two, and three. So line one, one, two, and three, line two, one, two, and three, and so on. So depending on how you move these sliders, you can actually have different parts of the pixels show up. So for example, in this one, we have it set to basically do a find edges. If we turn that off and go to this one, we have a bevel. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see how that looks. Set it back there. And if we go to this one, we have a blur. So what's pretty cool is if you take something like this find edges, you can move some of these other values around and get a completely different looking thing. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see we have like the little corners that are kind of disappearing. If we move this back up we move something else back down, we can kind of get different lines to come in. If we bring this back down, we can have like this edge go away. So you can kind of do like a find edges that you can actually control which edges are showing up or blurs that are only on one side or like weird bevels that only go out one direction. So as I always encourage you, make sure to experiment with this. So if we take this a little bit further, what's pretty neat is that you can actually use that for different things like maps, for like displacement. So you can get this pixel sorting effect. So we basically have a map and what I did was I took a couple of these layers that have that same sort of find edges look that we get from the CC kernel. It's got a tint on it, and then I had a couple of things I was trying out, but I settled on using Minimax. I set it with a radius of six, and I took a couple of copies of those and basically stacked them next to each other. You can stack a bunch of these copies all the way to the edge if you want to, to get it closer to an actual pixel sort. And then back in our main comp, we have our top skyline image using this as a displacement map 33 times. It's a lot of displacement, and you would think it'd be really, really, really slow, but it's only somewhat slow. You could probably get away with a lot less than that, so experiment. These all animate from 0 to negative 10 horizontally. You could push them a little bit further. I actually only did it that way because of the way I was originally building this. So you can see you can actually push these a long way now. We have more coverage. So you can actually get some other effects that are slightly different than a true pixel sort. You can also make some other effects using kind of a custom find edges. And make sure you have a good background noise of cicadas because it really helps it work. And then you put over top of that CC ball action and echo. And you can kind of get a fake point cloud projection look. Especially if things in your scene kind of tend to move around a little bit. It gives it a little bit of a volumetric feel. You can also add a little bit of scatter to the ball action to add to the effect. Alright, so that's just a quick video to kind of introduce you to the power of the CC kernel effect. It's seemingly pretty complex, so I advise you to experiment with it. I'm sure there's a lot more cool stuff to do with it than what I've just come up with. Alright guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you check out the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.